Hey everyone, it's John Isaias here from the Automator, and I was so excited the other day. We, you probably saw the HK Hero Challenge I put out there to people, including you, if you're interested, you can reply back, you the viewer. And Irfan and Isaias have both replied. I haven't published Isaias' yet, but we're really close. Uh, um, however, I happened to go to the forum today and saw that Lexicos actually replied back to me, so I was yeah. so stoked, because we all are in his debt, like forever, right, is what he's done. But it was really cool, he took the time to write back, and uh, here on my screen, you can see the first one, this watcher, um, and it says, like, have you ever taken notes to keep track of which episode of a series you're up to? I use a script. It automates a number of things, how he consumes media. I love this next line. I'll probably never publish this script, right? <laughs> what I love about this is what it really kind of has to do with, with auto hockey. Auto hockey, to me, is a very personal thing. Yes, we yeah. do great things and help other people and do stuff, but you know what? I have a crap load of things that I write just for myself, right? And That's it right. makes sense to give it to other people because I've customized it exactly how I want it. And it's all about me, like what I want. Yes. I love about Auto Hotkey. So you can see that Lexicos is the same. Like he's never going to release that because it's just for him. I, right. I don't know if I want to keep tracks of the episodes the same way as he does. Maybe he has some rules for that or something else. Yeah, or different I just, yeah, it yeah. Different, you know. What is gathered? I mean, there's so many different things you can do, right? And that's the thing. Is he's like, he built it for him, you know. And that's what's fun is when you build it for yourself, you, yeah. you really get to make something that you love because you, you know you created it yourself. And he says, if I had to choose a favorite, this would be the one. But he he didn't share it, so we don't know what it is. Of, yeah, <laughs> that's part of my point of when you build it tailored to what you want, it's hard yeah. not to be your favorite, right? Yeah, because it's true. You just use it. And that's one in my list of five. It's like things that I still, and I did share them with people, but it's things I use all the time, right? Like they're yeah. the ones that, that, that I built them, not because a client had a need. It's because I had a need and I thought, hey, other people can use it. Yes, that is true. Now, I see the second one here being the mouse gestures, Yeah, which we have heard about those. Uh, I have, right. When I'm in the forums, I see many people talking about mouse gestures. I don't know why I don't like mouse gestures that much like I, I don't find the relevance for me having to drag the mouse to do a, a figure is kind of like i just go ahead and click the damn thing That's or press a hotkey or press a hotkey right yeah you have a lot of hotkey set up and yeah. i don't want to have to remember some arbitrary notion but for me a hotkey associated with the letter that usually makes sense like intuitively it's just, a, a, for me, a better way to do it. It's not that there's something wrong with it, right? Um, I would say, I would say, when I tested, because I downloaded the script and tested it, he did have some gestures built in, like default gestures, which made sense to me. Like if you, and, and how he set it up is that if you press the right click button and then do the gesture, something happens. Now, one of them was, if you right click and move the mouse to the left, if let you're let an explorer sharing. window, why don't you share your screen? I'll stop sharing. You can share. Oh, yeah, sure. Let me let me display. Because it right. I get it, and I get it, especially you know, for certain basic things. I, I okay, I can see how it's useful. Yeah. So this is a gestures uh program. I just double clicked on this. This is the engine, and it is running. I can see the icon down here. And if I'm in uh ex an explorer window, and this is what I meant. It does make sense a little bit. So if I go to, and I navigate through a few folders, now from here, I want to go back to the previous folder. I could just go ahead and click on this arrow here, or I could use the Alt left button on my keyboard, which does that. But what if I don't want to either go there to click or use a hotkey that the, hotkey, the keys are too far apart? Then if I right click and move my mouse to the left, it usually what it does is that it goes to the it goes back. So when I do that, it goes back. If I do it the other way around to the right, it then it goes forward. So I understand the use when the gesture is that simple and when the action is something that yeah, the hotkey is too far away. But if my hotkey is F one, why would I draw an image to? I think in a, and I'm sure action. Lexicos is slight, not this doesn't apply to him, but for for you and I, I think. We are both, I, I don't think I've ever asked you, but I see you type, so I, I'm pretty sure you're a, a touch key, you don't you don't hunt and peck, right? Right, no, no. It's always on the keyboard. And, yeah. and I think it's also why for you and I, we both normally our hands are on the keyboard, we're not on the mouse, and that's why- Yeah, I'm, we don't use the mouse that often, yes. That's, that's right. not, not the same as a lot of people do. Um, that's it does, 
having it as an option is bad, right? It's just right. that for us, it just doesn't come up because our hands are usually on a, on the keyboard. And so we just... And, and, and usually when I think about mouse gestures, I, what I've seen the samples build for is that they're very complicated gestures, like draw a, tri a triangle that does this one thing and do a circle to do this one wow. thing. And I'm thinking like, yeah, that's too much of a of yeah. a complex thing just to get to accomplish a task. But a, a gesture like this one is so simple. It's just Hellbent like, has a back. crazy complicated one that you can really go to town on it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's for a doctor, I think, is actually it says client. Yeah. Right? And it's, of course, you have to have a doctor to be able to remember exactly what you're doing <laughs> because it's so complicated. It's still really cool. But, hey, if your hand is almost always on the mouse and you don't even have the keyboard handy, it that's, makes that, that would be perfect. Yeah, that would be perfect. But, um, and that's what I mean. So if it is gestures that are very simple enough, I, I see the value and in certain actions, but I wouldn't have, I, I don't want to remember 25 times, 25 types of gestures that do different types of, I, no. my brain is not made for that. But so you know what? People might find it easy. Is this, we might do is reach out to some of our radiologist clients because we've done a couple for them, helping them with doing stuff because they get frustrated because there's a crap load of clicking and they want to get somewhere, right? And they've had us automate some of their um, radiology software. Mm. But yeah. this could be one. They do a lot of voice activation of stuff, and then they, they get into it, and then they have a, a quick – they have the X24 key keypads, right? Yes. Stuff. But, hey, it depends if they have a hair. That might be – that's what I mean. Like, I, I'm not against the gestures idea. I just don't find it myself. Right. Yes, well, because I'm more a keyboard guy. But if it is a doctor that is using the mouse for 99% of his work, then a gesture might be really cool for him. Or if you're a presenter and you're up in front of a screen, not like we do on Zoom where we're sitting in a computer, <laughs> right? If you're up in front of an audience and you have your mouse, your pointer in your hand, like, again, that could be really helpful. That's totally true. Okay, no, that made, um, made me yeah. laugh, right? Because uh, it's called a <laughs> control, and you're like, what is this? So why don't you share your screen, show them. Yeah. <laughs> we laughed out loud. It is, saw it. Right. It is very cool. I, I don't know if want a tool like this. Yeah. <laughs> now, the funny thing is, and that that's something that um, when you're studying software um, developing development, you, you hear about software developing patterns. And that means that there's a problem that shows up very often, and people have got a solution for it in a specific way. For example... The control C command to undo an action is a very common pattern. Many programs have an undo action, right? That's very common. Now, this happened in this case. It seems to be that it is a very common problem for us to have many running scripts. Some of them doesn't even have an icon. Hey, how do you access them? How do you exit out from them? How do you? So uh, we came up with the um, auto hotkey script hub is what we named it. So script hub or hotkey ASK script hub. Uh, and this one created a, 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 a kind of like a little list of things that we could see. And it lists all of our scripts with their icons. And we have a few actions that you can take. Open the screen folder, exit, suspend, pause, and so on. But then uh, I, I asked Joe, hey, what is IHK control does? We downloaded it. And sure enough, what it does is basically the same. It gives you a list of running scripts. It's not actually showing specific icons. I think you can per, uh, modify that if you want in the code. But we decided it was best just to use the one that they use. But the actions that it allows, one cool thing that I liked about this one is that it gives you what version of AutoHotKey is running. Nice. So for example, this one, AutoHotKey Toolkit is 1.1.37, but this one, which is prompt assistant is 2.0.10. I guess that's a very cool idea that we might oh, also implement, yeah. right? Um, you can get the tray menu from that script. So right now the menu that I'm looking at is not the, sc the script's menu, but I could see the menu from that particular script if I wanted to and see the options it has. But interestingly enough, what I liked the most was the fact that you have access to take a look at the hotkeys, take a look at the last lines, take a look at the, the key history. I don't know if you remember that um, we can access uh, this window for any running script in, unless they have disabled that. And you can see these options here about the variables, the lines, recently executed and so on. Well, 
this tool allows you to look at that. And interestingly enough, you see this one here, the AHS launcher. That one is a script that I have that does not have an icon. The same with the pretty links. Those two here, they don't have icons. So I cannot right click on them and get anything, right? So what HK control allows you to do is that I could actually look at the variables, look at the recently run lines, the hotkeys and so on for that script, which is very similar again to what we were discussing on script hub. I, I was pleasantly surprised. I said like, hold oh, on. <laughs> yeah, it's it no. like we reached the same conclusion. One for <laughs> us, I'll say we have is that we have a open the folder, right? Yes. Which is handy. Uh, depending right. on what you're trying to achieve, right? But I do like to be able to open that folder. Right. So for us here in um, in here, I could go to prompt assistant and say, open the script folder, and it would open the folder where that script is located, which I thought it was going to do it, but probably I didn't click. No, there are. Oh, there it is. Ah, yeah. Sometimes it doesn't do it. Uh, yeah. So maybe we should look at how he implemented his. In, in oh well, he doesn't have that really. He, you can yeah, edit you. Yeah, but I just mean some of the other stuff as well. We're sending post messages, if I remember correctly. Oh, okay, I understand. Maybe he's doing something else. I understand your point. Now this one here that is oh hold on open what is open? No, yeah, I figured that's, that's what it did was kind of. Yeah, that doesn't really the default action. Is that what it does? Right. Yes, that's what it does. Yes, um, but when you click on edit, it just opens with. Um, what is this? Oh, oh, this is interesting. I click on edit, and as this program includes many other libraries, it's oh, telling me which one do you want to add. Uh, yeah, that's, that's awesome. interesting. That's very interesting. Yeah, I didn't. The only thing is that he's opening it with Notepad. I don't know if he's using the default editor. Let me see what happens if I click on edit here. So if I just right click and hit edit. Oh yeah, I don't have anything set up, so he's probably opening with Notepad right. by default. Right. So, but but again, again, we are seeing the similarities on how we thought about this tool, and that's what AHK Control does. It allows you to have access to all the running scripts and allow you to kind of like perform actions on them, especially if they don't have icons. I think that's the biggest aha thing yeah. because that this pretty links tool, I cannot access it anyway because it doesn't have a tray icon. So We're having it in this list is very cool. When we were talking about the script I wanted to create for adjusting the volume of the media player, you know, externally, and Irfan's like, oh, we'll just create another script. I'm like, I already have like 14 auto hockey scripts running, you know, normal. <laughs> and, and maybe five to seven of them don't have a system tray icon. Like, I don't need right. another one on top of it. But right. it's, it's still, if I didn't have the script hub tool, I wouldn't hide nearly so many of them, but the fact I can now easily, you know, get into just them. hide them all, and then yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, um, number four he listed was the debug vars, and then he he goes yeah. on to mention how it's it's built into the site um, for Auto Hotkey as well. Which years ago I did a couple videos on that, and it's it's super powerful. Powerful. We um we both love being able to peek inside your running scripts and step through. Do you use more than just a message box? right, to understand what's going on with your script. I love when I watch you do it all the time in VS Code to not only peek inside of where you are and the, the order, the, st the st what's it called, the stack? The, the step. Yeah, the stack on what has been right. called. How yeah. you got to where you wanted to be. But you often will change the value live of the variable. And I love that, right. like, hey, well, what if this was this? Let's just, well, let's just test it. We don't have to go change our whole script. Let's just live change that value, right? That's really cool. Right. And in this case, what I think is most useful about the, the debug bars is many times, if you're doing very quick debugging, you just do message box, do whatever, that's it. But yeah, you cannot message box an object. And right. that's where debug bars come into very yeah. handy because it allows you to have a structured view of a, of a variable that contains an object and you will see the tree of that object in a way that makes sense. It's not just simply... Yeah. Um, it's one of the ones, you know, I use Maestrius, uh M function, and he yeah. has built into that. If it's an object, step into it, shove them all into the object, do all this. Which is what I was saying before. There's a lot of patterns in software design that happen over and over again. Yeah, Lexicos right. is not the only one who thought about looking at the variables like that. 
Maestri sure. thought about it that way. You thought about it. Everybody, and, and you might find the same implementation in different ways. Right. And everybody's doing the same thing. I just want to look at an object in a, in a, in a structured way. Yeah, that's where this well, one comes into as well. And that's where a lot of people, when you start working with an object, and we were in the hero call today, we were talking about use just using objects to store data, let, let alone learning classes and all this other cool stuff you can do with them. But just using them to store your data and structure it in a certain way is incredibly helpful. It's what I did forever, right? Like, and it may, allowed me to do so much more because my data was structured really well, allowed me to easily access it, update it, pull from it, do whatever I wanted to it. Uh, but it's just until you have a tool like that you're like oh well there's a little problem okay well let me do a for loop and let me do <laughs> exactly box, right that's what most people do but you're like with a debug tool it's all it's right there it's just right there exactly. and VS so Code use, yeah. even takes it that one step further where you can even say hey monitor these variables only like there's 800 variables in this object but only or sorry it's script but only keep track of these over here so I can see them. And I, and that's another really nice in VS Code. I got to say, I, I love that functionality. Yes, that is correct. So I, I do. And uh, did he mention any other scripts that he? Well, yeah, there's your favorite one, the the, the version three of Auto Hotkey. That was the. <laughs> yeah, I really love that one. Um, yeah. That was a, a very cool post. Uh, he Version two of Auto Hotkey was still in alpha, right? Yeah. And then um, somebody said, I don't know what was it, like, oh, I hope this particular action, I wish I could do this in AutoHotKey. And he said, oh, you know what? Um, that's going to be up in AutoHotKey version 3, he said. And then on April 1st, one of those years, he just yeah. said, hey, guys, AutoHotKey version 3 is out, but version 2 wasn't even out. And everybody was like, what the hell? And everything was there. And the point was, like he said, this version of AutoHotKey is completely JavaScript. It's a JavaScript engine, whatever. And it was, everybody right. was like, holy cool, because then you can run all JavaScript that you want because right. it's JavaScript. And it was very awful. And he actually gave the code. There yeah, is an AutoHotKey right. version, which that's is... That's what I think got a lot of people of like, who would take the time to build this as a, you know, as a joke? As a joke, right, exactly. And yeah, then in very... the end... The code is there. I think he actually linked to it. It is in his repository. Right, right. Uh, it is a working example of an auto hotkey <laughs> version that is JavaScript engine. And uh, I laughed a lot when I was looking at the at the comments and everybody was kind of confused at first. Then they figured it out it was a joke and so on. And but it was a funny thing. By the way, someone wrote me the other day. They're like, hey, I, I have some auto hotkey scripts I'd like to, to feature sometime and show you. And, uh, you know, I'm like, I, I'm always open to, to checking stuff out, right? But And he's doing all V1 stuff. And he mentioned using a browser and connecting to it with JavaScript to execute stuff. I'm like, yeah, we've, you know, we've we've done that also. We've done it V2. But I said, the really cool thing, um, and I didn't have the object at the top of my mind when I wrote him the email, but I'm like, is we did a video on it where with V2, we were literally connecting to the object in JavaScript and executing JavaScript from our object, right? And that was right. freaking really cool. That, that, and, and that was also from Lexicus. He created yeah, this. Right. Um, yeah, this was an amazing thing. Yeah, which uh, is what then... like, you laughed that was like, it almost felt like the V3 thing of like, here you yeah. <laughs> You know what? That reminds me though, because we, and maybe I should ask him, uh, you know, if he'd be up for trying to figure it out. Remember we had a guy that wanted to execute Python in the same way? And oh yeah, I remember that. Could get it, even Tank, we asked him to take a look at it and yeah, it's not a straightforward thing. Yes. Yeah, I remember. It was, yeah. It was a bummer because we thought it was going to. Oh, yeah, that's easy. And then it it wasn't easy. Like it, um, but anyway, thank you, Lexicos, and thank you again for all you do. Like it, it, you know, definitely I can't tell you how much of my life I've gained back be, just because of the stuff you've done. And I told Isaiah when I was learning V two, um, I didn't really put it together at the time, but once I realized it's the, the like the GUIs are now dot notation. And they're yeah. so much more intuitive. I'm like, you know, if you, most of our viewers are, aren't are programmers, right? And for some people, if you're not a programmer and you don't plan to be a programmer and you're doing very basic stuff, maybe sticking with V1's not a horrible idea. Nice you know, yeah. but if you're at all have any plans to be a programmer or to do anything more than the bare minimum of being advanced, or, right. or if you're you spending a lot of time coding. 
yeah, if your script has a GUI, I don't care what you're doing. If you have a GUI, V2 in any of those situations, like darn straight. It, 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 is, a, it is a lot more intuitive. And I would say, for those who don't know, Lexicos, the idea of AutoHotKey L specifically, yeah. if I remember right, maybe I'm not remembering correctly, but if I remember right, it is because the original AutoHotKey V1 didn't have a way for you to use com object. Right, not directly. That's what and that's and that's what auto it had yeah. going for them at that time that they could connect to com objects. So Lexico says, hey, why don't we have that? Let me do that. And Chris said, I'm not interested. And Lexico said, don't worry, I do it. <laughs> so for, that's I a very know, huge jump, you know? Yeah. And you've been using a hotkey a couple more years. Years, I mean, more. You've done a lot more with it. Don't get me wrong. But both of us started. You started a little bit before me, but um, we were both learning it around the same time. Like me, a little bit later. I was talking with Jackie earlier this week. Jackie Stuck, right? Who's done all the webinars mm -hmm. and podcasts and stuff with me. Him and I both started right around the same time. Both of us came in auto hotkey right when that version was just released, and the V, the V, the vanilla version was really the dominant one. And yeah. I was trying to learn web scraping and I kept searching the forum and finding these posts where sometimes I couldn't make any sense out of the, it was with all with IE, which is funny because it was like, it's so much, right. that. but it was like, it's really hard to follow. And then other ones were like crystal clear. And it took <laughs> me quite a while to realize it was the dot notation using the com object in, uh, uh, you know, inside it instead of having to, yeah. Hank had a, a library for connecting to it. It wasn't horrible, like in the sense of making it easier to follow, but the V1, um, so point one with the, the L, oh yeah. my God, light years ahead of the, the previous version. That's of that. the things, just the fact that we were able to con use com, op com objects and use dot notations with that in the native Arahaki language, that was definitely a game changer. Like everything is different and there, I am very happy that at that time there was this Iron HK, Thing right. going, there was another fork like the Arahaki version, the H, which is still around, right? Yep. But I'm really happy that in the end, Chris decided, yeah, you take you take over from here and let's go that way. Even though I didn't want to, but let's go. Um, and Arahaki actually went in a very specific direction that Lexicos has has been giving it. Some people don't like it because Lexicos is very. This is what is going to happen, and we're going to do it that way, and that's it. But I guess that's for the best, because if not, we wouldn't be anywhere near where we are right now because everybody was pulling in different directions. If you, you know? look at the search for auto it versus auto hotkey over time, you'll see when the vanilla version, it auto it hotkey wasn't doing great, right? But after that, the version L came out, and it, that's where I think it totally took off. It took off, yes, yeah, definitely. It, it much I, I agree with that. Powerful. Yeah, and now Auto Hockey is much more popular than Auto It. Um, and with the V2 version, I'd say because for a long time you get programmers using Auto Hockey, then they're like, "Oh my god, I god this, it, you know, it's so quirky, and I have to learn these special rules for doing anything more complicated." Yeah. And the V2 kind of gets rid of all that. It's much more similar to most languages. That's right. Intuitive. So anyway, thanks again, Lexicus. We loved it. Um, hope to keep seeing your new stuff coming out, but we enjoyed it. Have a great day.